What's going on everybody, I'm Patrick from Powax and in this video I'm excited to teach you Virginia's 222 from X. Virginia used their 222 from X extensively in their 2019 national championship run. They used this play to beat Maryland in overtime in the quarterfinals, to tie and to win the game in overtime versus Duke in the semifinals, and they used this to score five goals out of their 13 against Yale in the national championship. The keys that allowed Virginia's 222 from X to be so deadly are the following three things. First, it is bare bones simple. So simple, in fact, that many players can actually be put into multiple positions because once you have the basic idea, you can serve in different spots just because it's so simple. So if a player is usually inside, sometimes if it suits a specific defense that they're seeing, they'll actually pull that player behind because he actually has the best matchup and it's not very difficult because of how simple everything is. Now, along with that simplicity comes the reads. The reads are so easy, and the cool thing about them is that they create this cascade effect where depending on what the defense does, we hit the first look. If they cover the first look, we get the second look. If they cover the second look, we get the third look. And if nothing is there, we get the third part, which is the spacing. Because we're in our 2-2-2, two, 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 and you'll see once we get into that part of this video, the spacing allows, even if we don't see any of those reads, once we move the ball, maybe once, maybe twice, we are then in a position to easily attack the opposite side of the field. And it just allows for the players to play so smoothly because of how simple it is, how easy the reads are, and how even if none of the reads are found, we are then in a position to move the ball to the opposite side of the field and attack with tons of space against recovering defensemen. It's just all in all, just an unbelievably awesome play. In this video, we're gonna go over Virginia's 222 from X in the following way. First, we're gonna go over the basics of the set and the play so we can view the play in its entirety first. And then we're gonna go back through what each individual player needs to be able to do and what they should look for and kind of some of the options that they're gonna have in a more in-depth manner so we can get kind of an entire view of what types of skills we want players to use, what options they have, and really the more in-depth coaching points after we have this view of the entire play. Before we get started, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Powlax, where you can download and print the playbook PDF that accompanies this and over 50 other Powlax videos by becoming a patron and supporting this channel. The goal for this channel is to put out free, in-depth lacrosse coaching content for coaches and players to access anytime, anywhere. If you have a specific question that you'd like answered or are looking for some individualized and direct attention regarding any lacrosse topic, make sure to check out the new tiers where you can join our monthly coaches Q&A or get direct access to me for an hour each month. Also, make sure to check out the Powlax Teespring store, where you can get Powlax hoodies, t-shirts, tank tops, mugs, even phone cases, and customize them to match your team's colorway. Finally, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow Powlax on all these social media sites. Now, let's get back to the video. So the first thing that we're gonna cover is the 222 set. Now, 222 stands for three groups of two players. We've got group one behind the goal at X, that's M3 and A2. Then we have group two, which is the players on the crease, A3 and M1. And finally, we have group three, which is A1 and M2, who are up top at the, basically the top of the box, kind of inside it a little bit, and they're gonna round out group three. Now, as we get into the play, we're gonna give each one of them a job. So the first thing we have is group one is gonna be running a two-man game at X. Now, this doesn't have to be a pick. They can pick, they can refuse pick, they can also mirror from the crease. And for the most part, we are gonna be in our big, little, or invert styles of picks. Now, as Virginia used this, the important thing that they were really trying to do, they were trying to use the picks as a way to dodge, not necessarily as a way to use it in a box sense where we're definitely gonna be picking and rolling. They would pick and they would roll, but it was more about creating a decision-making thing for the defensemen so that their dodges were more effective so that they could draw a slide. Now, 
For our second group, they're gonna be running scissor cuts from the crease. Now, a scissor cut is any cut where they're going to be running in an X pattern. Now, the important thing about the scissor cut is that the ball side player is always, always going to be cutting first. And it might be a cut, it might be a seal, it might be something else like that, but we'll get into that in our coaching points section. Now, as we get into group three, they are going to be hunting skip lanes and giving the Dodger as much space as they need. So if A2 comes all the way up the wing, they are going to fade and fade. And as they do that, they are searching for places to step in to find and fill those skip lanes so that A2 can feed the ball through to them. And that's the play. It's actually just this simple. If this is all you really wanted, that's really all you're gonna need in the video. If you don't wanna go over some of the other coaching points because you feel that your players understand how to play well within a set like this, you are good to go. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow all the social media, all of that, and you're pretty good to go. But if you wanna see a little bit more into how they used it, what techniques they used, and watch a bunch of the highlights, that's what we're gonna get into right now. So the first group we're gonna talk about is group one. And group one has their two-man game at X, and like we mentioned before, they're really using this as a way to dodge, not necessarily to use the two-man game. So the reason that they have to dodge and they have to dodge the score is that once we draw a slide, that is gonna create a cascade of looks with the player's motions up top that that's how the entire play works. And if they don't dodge the score and they can't win their matchups, none of that actually happens. So they have to dodge the score. And Virginia used this more as a dodge to score two-man game than they did a pick and roll style box true two-man game. The reason they are using a two-man game and not just inverting and not just dodging is because once they draw that slide, now we have a 4v3 up top instead of a 5v4. So once the LSM leaves to go to play A2, now we have M1, A3, A1, and M2 against DM1, D1, and D3. And with that extra space, the looks open up. It's much easier for our Dodger to find those looks and all of the extra space just makes it easier to operate. The next aspect of group one's two-man game behind is where are the short sticks? Now, Virginia is always going to put a short stick behind, whether that be in a big little pick or an invert scenario. So we're gonna cover inverts first. Within an invert, basically, traditionally, a lot of the short stick defensemen would stay up top. Now it's more commonplace to have them go back to X because teams are inverting a lot more. But basically, in this two-man game, sometimes they will just have one of the midfielders, say M3, just kind of run down 2X and then they'll dodge on a shorty. In this clip, the second player in group one passes into our short stick matchup and moves to the crease into a mirror position. The ball carrier moves to X and then begins his dodge. Notice how the off-ball player is now just mirroring to X, keeping his defenseman away from the dodge. As the ball carrier moves up the hash, no slide comes, so he takes a great shot. Now, for a big little pick, we are going to have a pull, which is big, and a short stick, which is little within a pick because if they switch it should give us a good matchup and so I'm going to outline that really quick so if we rate our players on their offensive and defensive ability this is how it goes within all of my drawings a1 is our best offensive player then it goes a2 a3 m1 m2 m3 so the attackmen are better than the midfielders and that corresponds to the defensive players that play them. Our best defensive player is D1, then D2, D3, the LSM, DM1, and then DM2. And so if M3 comes to pick for A2 and DM2 decides to switch to A2, that is going to give us a very good matchup to dodge against because A2 is our one of our best attackmen and DM2 is the least good defensive player on the field for our opponent. Now. For the most part, this just creates more thinking on the defensive end. Do we wanna switch? If we switch, are we gonna be able to draw a slide easier? And so by using the big little picks, we are just able to exploit the dodge even further than we normally would be able to out of our two-man game, and that will then draw our slide and our cascade of looks. In this clip, we're gonna see a big little pick where the defense does switch, giving us a short stick matchup, allowing our ball carrier to score. As the Dodger is moving towards X, looking like he is going to run to his left, the picker actually sets a swing pick where he will fake like he is going to set a pick on the right side of the defenseman and then flip his hips and set a pick on the left side of the defenseman as the Dodger splits back to his right. The pick is set well and the Dodger drives his man off of the pick, causing the switch from the defense and giving us the short stick matchup. As the Dodger moves up the hash, he uncorks an amazing shot that is only possible because he is defended by a short stick, not a long pull. 
Had he been defended by a long pole, there would have been a stick in his gloves and it would not have been nearly as clean. Now the final short stick is gonna be somewhere up top. I like to put them as the second or third slide rather than the first slide because I think that short stick defensemen not being as able to cover players backside on the cuts just means more than if they're just the first slide because I would rather have a short stick up here between players that I'm trying to skip to rather than as the player who is sliding, but you can't really be too picky all of the time. The final aspect of Group 1's two-man game in X is our Dodger and the things that he has to be able to do. And I like to term this that the eyes feed the pack because his vision is what is going to dictate whether or not he can see and deliver the ball on all of the looks that we are about to go over. So the first thing he has to be able to do is he has to be able to look up, have his eyes up, and see past his own defenseman. Now, I like to term this as a soft gaze where you're not looking specifically at one place and then another too much. You actually kind of let your eyes relax lack so you can see the whole field rather than one specific thing. But as that is happening, the way we would like him to train that is to have looks that are going to be inside first, then backside, and then ball side. And within that order, you're going to see the looks develop and he'll have an understanding of exactly what might open up as time passes. Now, a key important thing to that is he'll always have the outlet in front of him and behind him, and those are the ball side last looks that he'll have to see. Next is the actual ability to deliver the ball. And the first thing we have to talk about is a quiet stick. And so a quiet stick is basically that as a player's running, they're not cradling all huge, that the act of delivering the ball is most important. So we want the stick to be protected, but we also want it to stay near a place where that player can deliver a good pass. Now, that can be at your hip if you wanna throw some lever passes, it can also be up on your collarbone, but the stick has to be protected and you have to be able to deliver a ball quickly and efficiently to whatever the looks are, wherever you're trying to throw the ball. Now the last aspect that we have to talk about in terms of our dodger slash feeder is using misdirection within our eyesight. So the way that we position our head and our eyes will dictate off ball defensive movement as they are watching you. So that can be used in two ways. First is a look back fake, second is no look passes. So you'll see this in one of the clips that we see a bit later, but as the player comes off of the pick, he looks back towards X, which draws an off ball defenseman down, which allows the skip to go through. That's our look back fake, looking back towards the picking player. The next aspect is a no look, which let's say I come off of the pick and I see the player I want to throw to inside right before he's about to come off and maybe it's the second cut. Now, as he's about to come off, I'm gonna look up straight up this way before throwing a no look pass through into him. And so what that's gonna do is as I look away, the defenseman inside is going to relax, which is going to give our player inside a little bit more time. Now we're gonna go over some specific examples of when Virginia scored off of the dodge, which creates our cascade of looks. And our first one is going to be against High Point, and it's actually built just like this. So the only difference here is that the LSM actually doesn't slide. And as A2 gets up towards GLE, D2 goes around M3's pick, and once A2 hits here, he actually makes a nice bit of contact with D2, inside rules, gets up above GLE, and scores. Our clip begins with a pass from top left to back left, and right now we can see the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. As he begins his dodge, the pick is being set at X, and the ball carrier drives off of the pick. Now, the defenseman goes underneath the pick, which allows the ball carrier to pick up steam, embrace contact, push through the inside roll, and score. Our next clip is going to be a dodge and mirror versus Yale. And so, M3 carries down the wing. He's just kind of trotting back to X, and they had been using their two-man game behind quite a bit that day, but in this specific scenario, a2 instead of bringing the long stick to the pick he's actually just going to mirror so as m3 comes this way a2 kind of comes up and then m3 makes a nice roll gets up field and scores now as this happens a2 in his mirror function is going to get back to x and you will see it in a clip now the key is that as he mirrors he is keeping d2 away from the dodge and away from helping inside.
As we begin this clip, this Virginia player is guarded by a short stick. We have a great matchup, so he just begins his dodge in this invert. Now, notice how the other player in group one is now going to mirror on the opposite side of the crease. He's not actually going to pull his man to the dodge because we already have the matchup we want. As he begins his dodge, he moves towards X, rolls back, gets upfield quickly, throws a nice fake inside, shoots, and scores. In our next two clips, we're going to show situations where the dodge moves all the way up to the wing, so our snipers have to fade to the backside in order to give the dodger space. In our first example, Maryland takes the picker's defenseman and puts him inside to cover any roll when they get dangerous instead of having the defenseman be with the picker. Now for Virginia, that just means that they can run this razor pick very cleanly with no other defenseman in the way. As the dodger comes off of the pick, the defenseman gets underneath the pick and then has to go all the way underneath the goal as well. As the Dodger is rounding the opposite corner, he does a great job to embrace contact and push up to 5-5 five and five as the defenseman tries to drive him out. Now, he posts up the defenseman and looks through the defense, waiting to see if there is any slide that's going to come and if he can find all of the looks. Now, notice how both players in group three are now on the far side of the field away from the Dodger. This is going to give him room to operate. He tries to push top side, rolls back once, rolls back again, and takes an unbelievable shot as he's falling to the ground. In our second example, we actually get a five on five because the sub game is still going on and Duke is marrying with the Virginia short stick defensive midi who's trying to get off the field. He's actually staying on the field to cause the 5v5 because the 5v5 actually opens up even more space. So as the invert gets to X, you'll notice that this is going to be the mirroring player who's going to go to X. And as the dodge goes, it goes 15 yards above GLE. He then rolls back down the alley and shoots on the run down the alley. Now, there are two things that I want to make note of as we watch this highlight again. First, I think that the ball side sniper should have faded a bit earlier and tried to get behind their own defenseman as the defenseman shows. Second, I think more dodges from X should go high up the wing like this one, maybe not quite to 15 yards above GLE, but I think that the idea of a 5-5 five and five island limits a lot of players because they only end up getting to 3-4 yards above GLE instead of maybe setting the base at 7-8 yards and then allowing them to trickle back to 5-6. and six. Now we're going to go over the nuance of group group two and their scissor cut. And as we do that, my drawing is going to stay the same. It's going to be the same dodge each time. And we're going to go over each look. And then we're going to watch a highlight that has that look. So even though my drawing is not going to change, you'll see how each element is built within the live play and the highlights. And so the first thing we have is to divide up group two into the first cut and the second cut. And we're going to isolate the first cut first, because obviously it's the first cut and the second cut kind of depends on what happens within the first cut. So the main objective of this cut is that, let's say A2 dodges this way like we saw before, M3 comes to set his pick. Doesn't really matter what happens with the defense here, but as that happens, the LSM is going to slide off of M1, who is near side, and as that happens, he is going to come across the goal. Now as this happens, this is going to create a nice easy lane where the sliding player will not be in between the feeder and the player who is going to be catching the ball. Now our first look is going to be the usual cross crease cut right here, passed across, and then a nice little goal. Our player for Virginia carries to X against the short stick matchup, and we get our pick coming from the right side of the field. Now, as the pick is coming, the Dodger refuses the pick, gets upfield, and throws a nice cross crease feed to the first cut. Now, there are a couple of things I want you to notice here. First, Syracuse was trying to slide from the picking defenseman, and the first cut's defenseman actually just showed towards the ball because the refuse didn't allow for the picker's defenseman to actually be the first slide. Therefore, he had to at least show towards the ball carrier which allowed for our first cut to be wide open on the back pipe. Now for our second clip against High Point, what High Point was actually doing was they were trying to double the ball carrier and then as M3 slipped to the goal, they were gonna actually pull the goalie out to cover the rolling player so that then they could match up up top and basically lock off. But so as that happened, the LSM actually ends up kind of inside of M1 and M1 is going to seal the LSM off to the middle. And as the LSM kind of feels the seal, he kind of tries to get out around it. And at that point, M1 is going to slip to the goal. The ball once again will be fed inside. And he's got a really easy goal because the goalie came out around the cage to try to pick up M3 and doesn't quite get back. But so this is called a seal and slip. 
As the two-man game starts, notice how the first cut hops to the side of his defenseman and actively pushes him towards the middle of the field. This makes the defenseman think that he's going to have to get out to that direction, and as that happens, our first cut slips behind him, accepts a feed, and finishes. Now, the other thing we want to take notice of here is how High Point is playing defense. Notice how as the ball carrier comes off of the pick, both defensemen jump to him, and our goalie is actually out back behind the goal to defend the rolling player. Now, our Dodger does a a great job of stepping away, creating space for his hands, and feeding the crease, but you can see how High Point was trying to double behind with the two defensemen and pulling the goalie for the roll. Now the final option that M1 is going to have as he moves across the face of goal is actually just to seal off the second cut's slide. So in this example, he is going to come to seal off D3. As he does that, the LSM is going to slide, and that is going to leave a wide open lane for A3 to cut back towards the ball, receive an easy pass, and score. In this clip, our main focus is going to be how the first cut sets a seal for the second cut that ends up with a wide open look that is saved, and how Virginia likes to play it out in this set because there is so much room, and we get this cut from Conrad down to the goal, it's fed and scored. Another thing that we can take note of is how this is actually Virginia playing in early offense when they are still subbing. Notice as we begin the clip how this player for Syracuse is matched up with this player for Virginia who are subbing. This is going to take the picker or mirror player out of our original dodge, which may have given them more space, but overall this seal leaves the second cut wide open. Now we're going to dive into the nuance of the second cut, and the most important aspect of the second cut is that they are cutting back towards the ball. Now in most of these examples, the defense is going to play sides, which is basically that the LSM and D3 are going to zone up each side of the crease, and it's really not going to help them very much, but for the majority of the second cut finishes, you're actually not going to see the first slide go. They're actually just kind of going to show into space, which is still going to open up enough space for us, which kind of goes to show that this offense works really well. So as A2 dodges up the wing, M1 is going to cut across the face of goal. And as he cuts across the face of goal, D3 is going to have to pick him up because the LSM kind of shows into space here. Now, as this happens with D3 taking M1, that is going to leave a clear lane down the middle of the field for A3 to cut, accept a feed, and score. This clip starts off an end line, and as our player comes off of the pick, we get a great brush of the on-ball defenseman, which frees up our Dodger's hands, and he delivers a pinpoint feed inside that has a nice quick stick finish. Now, a couple things we want to make note of are, first, notice how the ball side defenseman just kind of sits into space here and isn't actually occupying or defending anyone. Also, because Duke is playing sides here, notice how the ball side sniper's defender spiders in to cover this second cut, but then is led back out because their player steps in ball side and is looking for his own step down. This is actually what frees up our second cut. We get that pinpoint feed and quick stick finish. The next little thing we have to discuss is what happens to that second cut if the Dodger doesn't throw to them right away. So let's say that A2 actually dodges all the way high up the wing here. If that happens, and M1 obviously cuts first, then A3 cuts, we don't want A3 coming back into the path of the Dodger because the Dodger may roll back and come back towards them. So instead of coming all the way back through the Dodge, they are not going to do this, and they're going to sit in space here. And so what you'll see is as the Dodge comes up the wing, his defenseman stays with him once he gets back up here and they come back down. Now the LSM is going to show a little further into space and you have this nice little pass inside. And I believe that this is the play that Virginia beat Duke in overtime with to go to the national championship. In this clip, our ball carrier is very patient as he drifts towards the left side of the field, setting up the razor pick. Once the pick starts coming to him, he dodges back towards X before refusing the pick and getting up to about 10 on 10 on the left side, rolling back, finally drawing the ball side defender, and hitting our second cut inside, who uses a quick stick finish to send Virginia to the national championship. Our final example is going to show what can happen if our players get basically to the low crease instead of the high crease. So if we are low like this, which you're going to see against Yale, basically what's going to happen is we're going to get the same first cut that we did with M1. And now instead of coming back towards the ball, A3 is actually just going to show up into space here. The ball is going to be delivered inside 
and once again, he is going to score. Now, the key to this is actually our players who are finding skips up top. If these defensemen don't respect our shooters up top, they're not going to be out towards these players. They're gonna be able to spider in to cover up this float. But the cool aspect of this is that this shows that for the two players inside, it does matter how they cut and when they cut, but it's more important about being able to find space and little holes within the slide package, but it doesn't always have to go first cut, second cut. It can go first cut seal and then find some space up above them or basically whatever those two have to do in order to get open. As we begin this clip, notice how low the players on the crease are. Yale here is playing sides, which means that this player is going to have to defend what will become the ball side, and this player will have to defend what will become the backside. Now, as our picker moves out to set the pick, he sets it relatively well, but the on-ball defenseman gets over it pretty easily, so no slide is necessarily needed. But as we focus on the movement inside, our first cut, the ball side cut, has to be respected until he enters the backside zone. So the first cut actually draws the ball side defenseman down a little bit, which allows our backside float up into the gap to have enough space to accept a feed across his body, load, and fire. Now we're going to go into the nuance of group three, which is a one and M2 as they are going to be hunting for skips. Now, as they're hunting for skips, they're going to have to do the following three things. The first thing they're going to have to do is they're going to have to give the dodger space to operate. Now, this is important because we want to make sure that we are spreading the field so that one player can't cover two, and we don't want to have either of these players get in each other's way or in the dodger's way. So as the dodge goes, M2 is going to fade to top center. A1 is kind of going to fade back towards this left wing. And as this happens, it's actually going to really open up the skip lanes by just moving. Now, the second thing that they're going to have to be able to do is read their defensemen and the slide packages. So let's say that the LSM slides, M1 takes his first cut, D3 takes M1, D1 takes A3 on his second cut through the middle. Now, A1 has to read that D1 has helped in the slide package and now he is wide open. Now, as the ball is passed through to A1, whether it's A1 or to M2, once they catch the ball, they have to be wound up ready to take a step down or ready to dodge a recovering defenseman that is coming back at them. Now, we're going to go through all four highlights at the same, like one, two, three, four, and what we're going to show is what happens when a ball is fed through to the near side to a step down, through to the back side for a step down. Then when the ball is fed to the near side, it's actually back side, near side to a dodge, and then back side to a dodge. So as long as these players understand how to read the slide package, how to read if their defenseman helps in the slide package and therefore cannot cover them, they're gonna be very successful at stepping into these gaps, into these skip lanes, and be able to take step downs or dodge those recovering defensemen. In our first two examples, we are going to show ball side step downs. The first will show how far we may have to fade if the dodge comes far up the wing. The second will show that we may not have to fade if our defenseman decides to cover the first cut. In our first example, the on-ball defenseman gets under the pick relatively easily, which gives us a one-on-one -on, -one on the left side of the field. Left side because it is the goalie's perspective we always speak from, not what we are seeing personally. Just before the Dodger crosses GLE, our ball side sniper begins to fade towards the right side of the field. As the dodge gets higher and higher, he begins to turn the corner towards the middle of the field, and this makes our ball side sniper's defender show towards the ball. As he shows, the dodger delivers the ball to our ball side sniper, who catches, fires, and scores. Before we move on to the next clip, I want to focus in on some of the techniques of fading, because I feel it will be important to allowing our players who are hunting skips to fade correctly and be more efficient with their movement. The first thing I want to focus in on is where he is fading. He is fading right on the edge of dangerous space, where if his defenseman does slide, he will easily be able to accept the feed and shoot or accept the feed and dodge. The one thing that we don't want to happen is having them fade too far out where their defenseman can play the ball and them. Second, because this player is right-handed and he is fading to the right side of the field, his stick is up 
ready to accept a feed as he is backpedaling. Now, if he was left-handed, I don't mind if a player stays left-handed, moves forward, and accepts the ball across their body in a lead-me type of way, but for some coaches, they really like to make sure that their players are accepting the ball on the outside of the field, regardless of whether or not it is their strong hand. In this clip, we're going to focus on how the first cut draws the ball side sniper's defenseman into the middle so he is wide open for a step down and doesn't need to fade. As the ball carrier dodges off the pick, the first cut goes, drawing the ball side sniper's defenseman into the middle, which he reads extremely well, steps towards the ball, accepts a feed, and has a step down from about eight yards. In this clip, we're going to see the backside step down against Maryland that sent Virginia to the national semifinals. The thing we want to focus on here is how each player uses their reads to create this cascade of looks that frees up our backside sniper. As the ball carrier rounds the left edge, the ball side defenseman shows towards the dodge. This is the read that tells the second cut to cut down into space left by the ball side defenseman. Because he's cutting down into that space, the backside defenseman has to spider in to cover that cut, which frees up our backside sniper. The ball is fed through the lane, catch, snipe, selly. In this clip, we're going to see how a dodger can use his eyes to manipulate backside defensemen. As this player comes off of the pick, notice how he looks back towards the player who set the pick, which holds this backside defenseman on the low wing. Now, as the Dodger continues to run, he skips the ball through to our backside sniper, who catches and splits against a recovering defenseman, beats him down the alley, and scores. In this example, we get to see a near side sniper dodge after the ball has been skipped through to the backside. So as the dodge goes, he skips it through to the backside. The backside player immediately throws it to the near side player who splits to his right, rolls back to his left, gets to the middle of the field, and scores. More than the idea that the near side player can catch the ball and dodge, I think that this clip exemplifies the idea that the spacing within the 2-2-2 allows any of the perimeter players to dodge if they see fit. For the final portion of this video, we're going to talk about the cornerstone of this offense, which is how each look plays off of the other. So if we start to hit one look, the defense is going to adjust and it's probably going to open up one of the other looks. And so we're going to go through the entire cascade, starting with our goals off of dodges. So let's say within our two-man game, A2 starts with the ball and we get the same pick from M3 as we have in the rest of our examples. Now, as A2 comes off of this pick, let's say no slide happens, he turns the corner and he scores. Now, the next time that this is going to happen, they're gonna to want to slide. And so we're gonna have DM1 slide first because it's not usual, but it shows all of the looks as we go through then the three looks after that. So if DM1 decides to slide, that's gonna open up a skip lane for M2 to step in, accept a feed and score. Now, if they don't slide from DM1, which they probably won't because you really wouldn't want to slide adjacent in a 2-2-2, now the LSM is probably going to step in, want to slide to A2. As that happens, M1 cuts to the back pipe, receives a feed from A2, catches, and finishes. After that happens, D3 is going to want to pick up M1's cut. As he picks up M1's cut, that is going to open up the lane for our second cut and A3 to cut back towards the ball receive a pass, and once again, score. Now, if this starts to happen a lot, now D1 is going to spider in all of the way, which is then going to allow for the skip lane all the way through to our backside sniper A1, who then can step in, shoot, or take his dodge. The key to this offense is that all of these different looks play off of each other, which allows for our players to just play. Now, even though this offense has some great looks, it's more important that our players understand if the looks are not there, they still need to just play. So now we're gonna show two examples of when Virginia ran this offense it did not give us any looks, but they ended up scoring anyway because of how they continued to play quickly after the play was run. The play starts with the dodge down the alley, which is going to set up our two-man game behind. As they initiate the two-man game, both Maryland defensemen end up trying to double the ball, which Virginia reads and throws the ball back to the player at X. As he catches it, he pushes the left side and tries to force feed the ball inside and the ball is dropped. Virginia quickly gobbles up the ground ball, feeds the ball up top, and scores on a step down. We begin this clip with the ball being carried to X to initiate the two-man game. Now, as the player moves out to pick, he's going to slip through and allow the dodger to dodge the right side. As he dodges, the first cut becomes open, but he catches the ball too far down the back pipe and ends up just circling X and coming back to the right side. He passes the ball up top and then back cuts his defenseman as his defenseman shows towards the ball, accepts a feed, 
and finishes. Now this is a prime example of how we want players that just understand how to play. It's more important that they know how to play than it is for them to be able to run this play. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Definitely let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section and smash that like and subscribe button. Also, if you'd like to download the playbook PDF that corresponds to this video, you can get that at patreon.com slash palax by becoming a patron for $5 a month. You also get access to all of the other playbook PDFs that correspond to all of the other Palax videos. Definitely check out Palax on all of social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and my personal LinkedIn, which is Patrick Chapla. Come and hang out with me on Wednesday mornings for the Powlax live stream on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube. You can also catch the Powlax podcast on Thursdays. Have a good one. I'll see you guys in the next video.